Let's talk about the um, inclusivity guide that councils have been uh, given, uh, in which it's been said they shouldn't use the words mum or dad. Oh. <laughs> I mean, when is it going to stop? Oh, it's just... Make get it get me off, get me off. Yeah. But I think, actually, so what they're saying is not mum and dad, but birthing parents. Yes. Now, you know, they're doing this so people aren't offended. Well... You know, I can't pretend I'm really offended about this, right. but equally, birthing parent, are you are you for real? And you know, for it's many, not much of a card, is it? It's really not for many women. Birthing is actually a tremendously traumatic yeah, I experience. Bet. Yeah, it's pretty traumatic. You know, and for, for men, some of the my, men, you know, my husband fainted yeah. during it. And so yeah, he did. <laughs> so you know, the thought he'd be called birthing parent, and it's also it's just it's delusional. Who wants this? Mm. And actually, I think there are a couple of serious points to make on this because you know it's funny and it's ridiculous, and actually the this is the local government association yes. which is almost like the aggregate of lots of different councils now they've actually taken this guidance off their website yeah. i tried to find it earlier and they say that because of the feedback they're discussing it, oh yes that's um, good well so you know this is why you can learn about how important it is to fight back and to push mm. back because if you don't it becomes sort of you know the norm whereas if you do push back a bit sometimes people will go okay well maybe we shouldn't be doing it well you've got to ask as well where's the budget coming mm. from from this so you know in the same week actually we've just learned that budgets of local councils are set to lose a billion pounds just because of inflationary mm. pressures so you know these are associations and councils that are paid for by the taxpayer who is paying yeah. them to come up with this nonsense and also, who are they accountable for? You know, mm. it kind of makes you think more deeply about these organisations, yeah. doesn't it? Well, think, it does. Well, I mean, the councils in this country, actually, are vastly uh, overfunded, incredibly overstuffed with people that don't need to be there. And what people need to be reminded of, for me, constantly, is that most of the money that we give to them in our council tax goes to their pay and goes to their pension. And hardly any of it goes to any services, you know. So it's literally a, a licence to, to give people loads of jobs and pay them quite well for it. Well, it is. And when you see such a lack of common sense, I think it's really really troubling because you so then you know i had a look at what this local government association mm. does and it's got a very broad remit so it's basically got fingers in many pies yeah. including you know schools children right. education yeah. social care policing health. sometimes yeah policing and you think wow you yeah. know that people so devoid of common sense yeah. have such a say over all these mm. areas with little and accountability when i was in edinburgh um i don't know what the head of the, the the council gets paid down here or in various different places but the leader of the edinburgh uh, city council was on about half a million a year yeah and, and, when and you they think... were told that and when, when we asked them why they was like oh because it's a, it's a very big budget they've got a 40 billion pound budget this is insane so meanwhile our nurses we heard uh, that lovely nurse on mm. jeremy carl show earlier you know are being paid sub 25 yeah. grand in some cases yeah. working night shift after night mm. shift at the front line of you know one of the most important jobs there is like mm. we just we get it so wrong we do final thought i've only got about a minute and a bit um molly russell's inquest um they're obviously are, are, are urging action on the online safety bill there's a lot of different opinions on this isn't there mm. So there's obviously it's a really interesting crossover between free speech and child safety mm. and you know like many others I think the legal but harmful provisions of the online safety bill so this is the provisions that say that content that is legal but could be harmful mm. is going to be heavily regulated mm. and tech companies are going to be in a lot of trouble if they don't take this content content mm. off i think this is a nightmare for, mm. for free speech yeah. that said i think it is unambiguous in light of the molly russell case that the child safety provisions of this bill need to go through mm. personally i would be in favor of taking an even hard liner hard more hard line approach on child safety which yeah. is to say you know what role does social media actually have in yeah. children's lives so we found out during that inquest about how hard it is to regulate the content mm. a lot of blame was pinned on the algorithms actually oh it's not social media yeah. it's the algorithms i'm not convinced you know i think in light of that case has the time come for us to ask does the benefit of social mm. media outweigh the huge risk mm. of harm to so many children? And actually, should we look at an outright ban for yeah. under 16, say, I on think social media? I think they've absolutely got to get better at it. We must uh, do that. <laughs> we must talk some more about that. Molly, thanks very much indeed.